Hey everyone, I'm back uh, with my August edition of my monthly opinions on the Sonic the Hedgehog comic book and franchise. And I'm sure you just listened to my review of uh, 263. And overall, I thought the Waves of Change story arc, like I said in, in that audio video, I thought it was pretty damn good. Well, pretty damn decent, I should say. I thought it was pretty damn decent. And uh, I love how you get these hints with this arc, the previous uh, two-part arc, and the Countdown to Chaos arc. I like how you get these uh, teases of the Whale Hog transformation uh, of Sonic and that how it's going to be revealed next month. Now, as far as the future stories go, yeah, we are getting Werehog debut next month. We are getting the whale. We are getting uh, the Unleashed adaption or loose adaption of Unleashed starting next month. I, I do like that we're finally getting there. Um, as far as how I think it's going to go, I I've given my opinion on it. I mean, especially now that you have Sonic going to, in the next few months, in the next few issues, going to be meditating and stuff with this shaman sloth of friend of, of Mighty's. I really think that's going to come into play, and I really think that's going to go into the advantage of Sonic and the Freedom Fighters. Because I think we all know what this is leading towards. I think we all know this is leading towards Sonic getting con gaining control over his Werehog transformation and being able to unleash it when the time is right. So that's really cool. That's really cool. And like I said, I think it's going to lead towards, and I think it's going to come up in the next few issues, in the next few months, it's going to lead to Eggman being confronted by Werehog Sonic and basically Werehog Sonic beating the living crap out of him. And basically surprising Eggman by saying, hey, I have control now. I know that these are my friends. I have control. And oh, by the way, I'm just, I'm getting ready to kick your butt. And probably, and probably if I know Ian Flynn, have him show what he's done on his way to face Eggman. Now... As far as the whole synopsis goes for the next few issues, especially the one where he's going to be meditating with this Charmin Sloth, let me ask you this. Do you really think Ian Flynn, after going through what he's done with you know, the introduction of the characters, saying that the Freedom Fighters are back, do you think he's honestly going to trap them? He's honestly going to let Eggman trap them and beat them and maybe roboticize them? No, of course not. Because I think it's obvious to anybody that when Sally made the plan for Eggman to catch him on camera, she wanted him to know. That she wanted him to know because she wanted him to do what she knows he's going to do, and that's plan, plant a trap. I mean, yes, you know, Eggman acknowledged in the backup story of this month's issue that she stole his files. But... I think she's realizing that that's what Eggman's going to find out eventually. And that that's what she wants. Because if they don't let Eggman know what, what they're doing, he's going to figure out anyway, and he's going to do things differently. So basically, if you think Ian's going to have these characters trapped now that they have these powers and stuff like that, these abilities, no, it's not going to happen. Because it's basically going to be the fact that, yeah, Eggman may surprise him at first, but it's going to be something that they know what's coming. So don't worry about them being trapped or anything. Because even if it happens, it's not going to be for forever. It's not going to be a repeat of what's happened before. So don't worry about that. And as far as the um, uh, Sonic Universe stories go with Knuckles and the Chaotix and, and uh, Chip. Now the little Chip character and, and Shadow and... All of them and Eclipse. I really like how it's helping build towards a big climactic uh, climax in the near future. And like I said, you know, I, I truly believe this is all going to come to a head um, in 275 next year, or it's going to come to a head 25 
uh, months later in 300. I really do. And here's why. You're adding all these new elements to the story. You're adding in like Gaia, you're adding in Tikal, you're adding in the Mystic Melody, you're adding in all these Gaia temples, you know, you add in the Chaos Emeralds. I mean, it's obviously building towards something that's going to occur either by next month, next year, I should say, which is essentially a year from now, believe it or not, it is a year from now today, uh, this month, I should say. A, excuse me, a year from this month, it's going to build towards something either by then or it's going to build towards something in September of 2016. That, that's what you're looking at. You're either looking at August 2015 or you're looking at September 2017, I should say. Not 16, but 2017. That's what you're looking at. You're looking at September 2017 or next August as the climax to this whole situation. You, th that, that to me is what you're looking at. And I know some of you may say, Oh, great, we have to wait that long again? We have to wait another freaking year for this whole thing to come to an end? Well, look at it this way. At least you don't have the characters constantly in one area like not whole kingdom you don't have them constantly you know in one area on a mission you have them all over the place now and look at it this way whether we like how this soft retcon or soft reboot whatever you want to call it came about at least there's some consistency now there is some consistency in this story Especially now that we got a loose adaption of Sonic Unleashed coming next month. And again, like I said earlier, I truly believe we're going to have a confrontation between Eggman and Sonic in his werehog form. And but well, basically, Sonic with control over his werehog form. I mean, you can. Uh, I mean, this is this is what I see. I see Eggman probably thinking he's won, going to gloat over the Freedom Fighters, thinking he's trapped them. They're going to say, "Look behind you." He's going to say probably like what? He's going to turn around and he's going to see a Werehog Sonic. And he's going to end up getting either his butt kicked or he's going to haul tail and retreat. Because I like how Ian Flynn is basically building towards the fact that Eggman, like the Freedom Fighters, doesn't know what's about to happen. So I like that part. I do like that. Um, but yeah, you know... I truly believe he's building towards something that's going to climax either by next August or within the two year within the two years after that, which would be September two thousand seventeen. I I truly think that's that's what he's building towards. Uh you know, I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but um I, I don't think I am. I think that's what he's building towards. I think He's building towards something that's going to climax either next summer or in the fall of 2017. Or at least in the summer of 2017. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I don't think I am. I don't really think I am. Now, as far as Sonic Boom goes, um, the, the comic, I like how they're doing sort of a... Well, I like how they're basically doing what they did with the Countdown to Chaos covers. The, it's interconnecting covers that when you connect them correctly, which a lot of fans have already done, it becomes a full-on splash uh, page or full-on splash cover that you can basically make into an 8x10 like I did, frame it and hang it, in, hang it on your wall, or you could basically make it a poster size and hang it on your wall. I like... I like how that's, they're doing that. Um, as far as how I think it's going to be different from what the comic, from what the main comic is, I think it's going to be more. I think. I think it's going to be more comedic. I could see that it's going to tie into the show somehow, by either referencing episodes or even referencing things in the game. But I truly believe it's going to be more comedic, more funny, more Looney Tooney maybe. And that's about it. That's what I think Sonic Boom the comic book is going to be. It's going to be just like that. 
is it going to is it going to be a straight on adaption of the of the show and the game a little bit but i think it's going to have more of its own original uh stories added to it and like i said you know they might interconnect with the game and might interconnect and reference with the show but i truly believe it's going to have its own it's going to be it's going to have its own thing it's going to be its own uh deal and like i said i think it's going to be a more funnier more comedic comic a more lighthearted comic than what we're getting right now with with the main comic and universe and i know that's hard to say but it's the truth it's the truth so to me i believe that's what we're going to get with sonic boom and as far as the cartoon series goes i definitely look at that as being you know a good you know 30 minute romp of two 11 minute shorts for each episode it's going to be 26 episodes but it's going to be fi- it's going to be 52 animated shorts contained in those 26 it's going to be 52 11 minute shorts contained within 26 episodes so i really like that and i think it's going to be funny i think it's going to be a very cartoony very comedic and if not maybe very looney tune like show i mean i said this before when sonic boom was announced and the way it was described uh, and the way it was described on how it's going to be i basically said i wouldn't be surprised that maybe they might go a looney tune route and let's say you know out of a thank you sonic kisses amy on the cheek all of a sudden you hear this big old splash or you see all of a sudden in cgi form amy melting into a pink puddle <laughs> I would not be surprised if they went in that direction if this is supposed to be a more comedic, more loony-like uh, show compared to what we've had before. So, uh, we'll just see what happens. But, uh, to me, I really think Sonic Boom is going to be like that. And I think, like I said, the comic book of Sonic Boom is going to be its own thing. It's going to reference things from the show. It's going to reference things... Uh, from the game but I think it's going to be its own deal and we're just going to go with it and see what happens I mean I might subscribe to the first few issues to see what it's like but um, or even just buy the first few issues to see what it's like but we'll see we'll see what happens but that that's my opinion what I think Sonic Boom is going to be like um, as far as the game goes I think from what we have seen, even though some of the cutscenes and some of the gameplay has been, you know, shown as to be still in development, um, or shown to be, you know, getting getting its finishing touches, I, I look at Sonic Boom the game, and I and I look at a game that I think I'm going to enjoy playing. I, I really do. I look at it, and I and I I look at a game that I'm going to enjoy. Uh, I like the fact that you're going to be able to use the characters as in team-ups and be able to use different powers with them and stuff. So I really like it. I really do. Um, I, and, I, and I think everybody else would agree. You know, some might say, well, it doesn't look like it's going to be that good of a game. You know what? Looks can be deceiving. Looks can be deceiving. And you know what? That's exactly what we're probably going to get. We're going to get a game that's going to be better than we expect it's going to be funner than what we expect and if it's going to have some kind of like connection between the 3ds and the wii u uh so be it but i'm really looking forward to uh the game as well so (laughs) you could probably expect me to fully get integrated with the sonic boom part uh you know portion of of the franchise so you can really you can expect me to do that. I mean, I got integrated with the Sonic X portion of the franchise, and look and look at the result of that. I mean, I have the complete series on DVD. I bought the final volume of the final series. I mean, the final season, final, you know, the final uh, thirteen episodes. Uh, I have the trading card game. I mean, what else can you say? So, to me, you know, I'll probably fully integrate myself with the Sonic Boom franchise. Probably not so quickly, because I want to see how others are going to react to it. But if I'm able to, I might even be able to record some of the episodes and see what it's like. 
So uh, that's all I really I'm going to say there. As far as Sonic goes in Smash, I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, especially now that you're going to have a real version of Mega Man uh, in there as well. And basically you'll be able to play Worlds Collide right there on, on, the, on Smash. So that would be nice to see. Um, I, I think Sonic's going to be, I think Sonic's a good addition to the Smash franchise. And, you know, you know, he's got his own unique power-ups, his own unique abilities. So I, I'm really looking forward to see what they've, to see if they've kept him the same or if they've even improved on him. You know, as far as, as far as, you know, gameplay goes when it comes to Smash. I'm really looking forward to that. So, that's, that's really about it. I mean, hopefully, you know, with DLC and everything, we'll probably be able to get maybe some additional Sonic characters added in as players. You know, maybe down the line we might get Shadow. Maybe we'll get Amy. Maybe Tails. Who knows? But that might be only in DLC, but we'll just have to wait and see if that ever happens. But definitely looking forward to to playing, playing Sonic and Smash again. And from what I've seen, you don't have to unlock him this time. He'll be automatically unlocked. He'll be, re basically, he'll be ready to be played uh, in the game. So, definitely looking forward to that. Uh, as far as the uh, Saga series and stuff that uh, Archie Comics has been doing, I think they're doing a decent job. You know, I know some people are surprised that they're still... Uh, reprinting some of Ken Pender's stories, but I think there might have been some kind of secret negotiation behind the scenes. I mean, when you recall that there was a settlement that we don't know much about right now, that was taken care of out, you know, in private. I think that settlement had something to do with you know the reprints. So, you know, I'm not surprised that we're still getting some of Ken Pender's stories reprinted in the select series of books, the saga series of books, in the uh, digest, um, or the archives, I should say. So I'm not really surprised by that. Um, I will say this, though. Uh, thanks to Frank Hill, there is a, a book I got. I don't know if anybody else has, has gotten it, but I showed this in a video in my package opening, and it's basically called... Super Interactive Annual 2014 Sonic the Hedgehog. It's um, released by Pedigree Books. And it's a nice interactive book. It's got some coloring you can do and stuff. But as far as its main story goes, as far as, it, as, far as its main story goes, um... It does have a comic book story in here. It does. It's a comic strip story part one, as it's indicated in here. I think it gives acknowledgement to Archie, I believe. It's done by Pedigree Books. And uh, basically it's something I think a lot of fans should have because it's really nice. It's got profiles in it. And again, I got this from Frank Keel. And the story that they have in here, the comic strip story is Sonic the Hitchhawk issue 230 primary target part 1. So and this is basically known as Sonic the Hitchhawk Super Interactive Annual 2014. It's official. It's basically something you can use your smart device with to get free profiles, free stories, free activities. And I guess it was released here in the States. It's by Pedigree Books. It looks like it was sold in the UK because the main price point on top of this or on the back is £7.99. And here in the US it'd be about £12.99. And in Canada it'd be £14.99, same in Australia. And it'd be £19.99 in New Zealand. Go figure. But yeah, that's probably the only other Sonic uh, news that I have in this monthly opinions. But my opinion on it is, uh, if you could find this, it's called Super Interactive Annual 2014 Sonic the Hedgehog. 
It's by Pedigree Books at pedigreebooks.com. It's definitely worth having. And again, I thank Frank Hill. It's Frank Hill on YouTube for, for sending it to me as a birthday gift. I didn't really expect that. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. And, and and the pages in it are really, really cool. They really are. They're, they're really cool. They really are. So, I mean, I, I like how they're adding, you know, stories in there. From, from Archie Comics, so at least it lets you know that Sega does acknowledge it. And it shows it's got a list of other 2014 annuals with free mask, ask and everything, so. Uh, but yeah, pretty nice to have. And I might do an on, I might do a video review on that down the line. Uh, but anyway, uh, overall though, you know, as, like I said, like I said, you know, I, I definitely see, uh, I definitely see this whole story arc that we got going on right now, either climaxing around 275, which is next August, or I see it climaxing in September of 2017. I know that one may seem way off and everything, but you know what? It's better than, it's better than nothing sometimes, right? If we're still waiting. But I think Ian Flynn, knowing how he is, he's got something planned, and it's all going to lead up to 275, and then we're going to go with something new after that. So, really, that's all I have to say, and uh, thank you for listening to my August 2014 monthly opinions on the Sonic the comic book and franchise. Uh, comment below, let me know what you guys think, think and um, that's all I'm going to say.